Hey guys, Zoe from Ignite here. Before we get into today's content, make sure you subscribe to our channel and use the bell to turn on post notifications so that you know when we upload our next video. Today, we're gonna to be doing a session on exam prep and study tips, particularly looking at extension English. So today we're going to be looking at three strategies which I personally use and I find helpful for kind of guiding you through how to prepare for an English exam. Um, obviously this will be tailored to a focus on extension English but the advice given is relevant to all um, different modules. So first we're going to be looking at exposure to questions. Now for me, exposure to a lot of different questions was a really good way to kind of test my knowledge and understanding and kind of pragmatically look at different questions and adapting my knowledge to suit exam questions. <clears throat> so I think it's important to note, particularly in extension English, the questions are complex and you need to address all parts. And so in order to do that, I personally used essay plans where I would look at an introduction, where I would look at a thesis and um, response to the question, and then um, brief paragraph summaries where you just look at the topic sentence and the evidence used, and then kind of a conclusion. So I thought that this was effective in the way that it kind of trained me on how I should look at these questions because as we're about to see, there are a lot of components to look at and it is important that you get to all those different components in order to ensure you get the best marks. So I've used a sample question from one of the previous papers. This one's derived from a Worlds of Upheaval module. So let's read the question. So light can only be understood with the wisdom of darkness. To what extent has your understanding of the potential of text to activate a change in perspectives in worlds of upheaval been shaped by considering both the darkness and the light in the text you have studied? So just looking at that question, there's a lot of words and there's a lot to read. And you have five minutes reading time for the exam. So that's not a lot of time and it's thinking time, so you can't write anything down. So it's really important to kind of take a step back and identify what the main components of the question are. So for me, I've bolded what I think the key components of the question are. And then what you can do is kind of prompt a series of questions, which kind of encourage you to sort of open your perspective of what the question might be asking for and how you can kind of diversify your response. So looking at this question, relevant ideas that you could look at is what is the darkness and light within the text you've studied? Um, I think for this question, it's probably more important to have a thematic focus. So maybe like hope and despair might be an interesting contrast to explore. What is the idea of a change in perspectives? And additionally, how do texts activate a change in perspective? So this looks at kind of the language and the form and how the composer innovatively uses features of the said form to kind of demonstrate a change in perspectives. And then always, well not always, but in most cases, a to what is extent component, which allows you to kind of look at, well, how true is this for the texts that I've studied? So I think through looking at that just on its own, that's a lot of questions that you could ask to kind of, you know, jog your memory of things to talk about. So I think one of the important things to focus on in extension English exams is that a lot of the times the questions are quite broad because there's a lot of text that they have to cover. And it's important to recognize the parts of the module or the rubric that are seen in the question and then sort of trying to have a more thematic approach to how to answer the question. So for me, I think this is where essay plans come in handy because there's not sort of a prescribed theme in this question which is identifiable and you can apply to your text. There's no reference of power or upheaval um, or some other keyword that would be in the rubric. There is the idea of activating a change in perspectives, but in terms of light and darkness, that's up to you to, to define what that means. So this is where exposure to a lot of different que questions can kind of diversify your understanding of your knowledge and kind of allow you to have a more sophisticated and nuanced idea and understanding of your content. So next we're going to look at organizing notes by themes and this kind of leads in from the previous idea of 
the concept that the questions can be quite broad and this can kind of help you jog your memory when you're going through your content and trying to find some sort of link between the question and things that you already know. <clears throat> So for me, I looked at structuring all of my notes around the certain themes and then had a whole bunch of quote technique meanings to accompany that. So looking at hope in Wedding for Gotto, you might look at the idea of the continued motifs throughout the play and what that kind of symbolizes and the idea of humanity is constantly enduring. So for me, I would go about this as having a large idea. So hope, power, um, anxiety and then kind of diversifying that and looking at that question in terms of sub-theses maybe, like in terms of maybe the idea of hope in human connections or hope in like looking for salvation, different types of ways so then you can diversify in different paragraphs. So I found this really helpful when going to write essays and having prompts to look at when I was reviewing my content. <clears throat> The third one we're going to look at is structure preparation. So this one is a little bit more tailored to extension English, but it is a major component which you really need to nail because you're obviously pressed for time writing about four texts in an hour for your essay. So you've kind of got to know before you get into it how you're going to approach this. So for me, I think having a solid structure helps with the cohesivity of your response and um, the appearance of your response being organized. So having a cohesive structure is great for the marker and for yourself. So then you can kind of have prompts throughout in terms of, you know, topic sentence, quote technique meanings, and then conclusion and going through in a really systematic process. And it also helps again for the markers with organization where you really need to make sure you're clear because you are talking about a lot of different texts and there needs to be a way to distinguish what you're talking about when, how it links back to the question and kind of has a steady flow. So the first structure we've got appears quite complicated, but it, it is a bit less complicated when you really discuss it. So all structures should begin with an introduction, which directly addresses the question in all components. This might take a couple of sentences. It also helps to kind of just ease the nerves when you're going into the exam. Um, then introduce a thesis statement and the four texts. I would keep the um, introduction of the four texts quite brief. You don't have a lot of time and you can waste a lot of time going through introductions of individual texts. So then going into the body paragraphs, what I found really important for getting a good mark in Extension English was making sure that all of the content was really fluid and that they, all the texts had an inherent link between them because a key component is textual integrity and ensuring that this is a module, like an overarching world of upheaval which you're responding to, so it needs to be clear that these texts all have a clear underlying similarity between them. So this structure has kind of links within the paragraphs. So you've got text one with a link to text two in the first paragraph. So you might spend a, the majority of your time, like two thirds of your time talking about text one, and then might have one link of how an idea or a quote is similar in a different text. In the next um, paragraph, you would then go and look at the text that you've linked and talk about that in a greater depth and maybe linking back to text one again or linking to text three because it kind of signposts to the reader what you're going to be talking about next. This obviously continues and ideally you'll have one to two links but because it's in an exam situation you may run out of time but usually one link is really good to kind of signpost and have that cohesivity and structure in your response and then obviously you re reiterate everything in your conclusion. So this next structure is a little bit more methodical and if you find the idea of just having to remember those links kind of a little bit stressful, there is a way to kind of just combine the two texts in the same paragraph very fluidly. So that would be a lot more ideas based and it does show a greater understanding of worlds of upheaval as a greater module, um, but it can be hard to achieve if you like to elaborate on text to a great extent. So this one, you would talk about two paragraphs per text and have each paragraph have a link back to a text in the previous paragraph to show it as a continual dialogue. 
So that's it for essay preparation and study tips for Extension English exam. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you liked this content, make sure to subscribe to our channel and turn on the post notifications using the bell. And we'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. If you do like the content, subscribe to our channel and we'll have more videos coming your way. That's right guys, thanks for watching and please make sure you check out our online resource database. We've had a team of state rank achievers and heads of English put these together for you, covering everything from essay structures and examples all the way through to craft of writing and comprehension skills. So check them out at ignitehse.com.au and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.